Hey guys, welcome into this video where we're going to be building a budget gaming PC. Our aim is to keep the price under $600. We want it to fulfill all our sim racing needs. Um, and I just thought I'd walk you through the, not just the parts, but the thought process, the choices I make, the explanations I make. And I thought I'd just run through a budget gaming PC build. I get a lot of questions from people, what, you know, minimum specifications for different sims, whether it's a set of course or iRacing like I run religiously. So in this video, I'm going to show you what to get from my opinion. There are lots of opinions, but I'll talk you through my choices and why I made them. Okay, for this, I'm going to be using a tool called PC Part Picker. I would strongly recommend it. It is what I personally use and have used for several of my builds in the past. Um, it's a great tool. Um, it lets you compare prices from Newegg, Amazon, all the different retailers in your region. And it finds you the cheapest price. It does compatibility matching to make sure you're not going to pick uh, a wrong component that won't work with your build. Um, it even tells you the wattage. So when you come to buy your power supply, you can make sure that you're going to be um, have ample headroom for future upgrades. Okay, let's head through the list. So obviously our first choice we're going to make on this build is our CPU. Now, you may think that the video card would be the most important choice for a sim racing rig, and you are correct. However, the CPU should not be overlooked. Um, the frames that your frame count that comes gets passed to your video are encoded by the CPU. So a poor CPU can bottleneck your video card, no matter how powerful your video card is. So you see this a lot in gaming builds where the CPU gets completely overlooked or people take an old PC and chuck a very powerful video card in it and still not getting the results they want. So let's click here. Okay, so down the left hand side of PC Park Picker is where your filters are made. Um, this helps you break down the tens of thousands of choices that you're gonna have. Now I've done this build a few times just to make sure I get the, uh, the video on point for you. And at the moment, it is Team AMD. The Ryzen's, I'm sure you've heard, are killing it at the moment. Not just for budget, but for price per performance or straight up performance for gaming, especially at the lower end. It's it's not even a competition. Um, well, I'll run you through it. I won't exclude Intel right now. We'll run it through together. Right, first thing I'm going to do is order by price. And we'll leave the price filter for now. Let's say we want a minimum of four cores. Six won't be a problem though. Um, let's put our core clock for now at a minimum, let's say three gigahertz. Uh, we'll leave the TDP. Right, so we're going to filter down a few processor families. So let's look for a Core i5, a Core i7, uh, the i9 won't be in our budget, uh, Ryzen 5, Ryzen 7, that'll do for now, uh, the micro, micro architecture. So all the Zens on AMD, and let me refresh my Intel knowledge. We want either Coffee Lake, uh, KB Lake, not Broadwell, as well. Yeah, I think we're good. Let me just double check. Overbridge, Sky Lake. Okay. Um, is this is brought right? So let's take a look at what we've got. Let's limit the price down to something reasonable. Let's say two hundred odd dollars for now. We're going to filter that down further. So let's have a quick scroll down. What have we got? An i5 7400, three gigahertz from Intel here with integrated graphics. Obviously, that's not that's going to be something we don't care about because we're going to be putting in a video GPU ourselves. So price for the first Intel is $182 and we have extremely powerful Ryzen's here sitting at the low $100 with boost clocks higher than uh, the Intel can offer. And for this build, I'm seeing a sale on the Ryzen 5 1600, first gen, Zemmel. Um, six core, whereas the Intel we were just talking about was a four core. Perfectly acceptable core clocks, nice boost clock, low TDP, that's the sort of power draw, and it looks like it's on sale now. Let's check that sale out quickly. 
Um, looks like the price drop is on Amazon. Yep, so what have we got? 48% off. So obviously at the time of recording, this sale is on. It may not be on for you. Um, we'll go ahead and use that CP, but otherwise if that choice isn't there for you, this Ryzen 5 2600 is obviously... I mean, it might even be worth selecting it value for money-wise for the extra Zen. No. Okay, we'll go with that. Um, because that's going to be something more comparable when you guys come to look for your build. Whether we can now hit our $600 budget will be uh, another thing. Okay, so next on our choice is a CPU cooler. However, this processor build, I am 100% sure, comes with Visit the Wraith cooler. Um, something like that. Stealth. Oh, yeah, the stealth. The X variant has the Wraith, I believe. Don't quote me. Okay, so we've added that processor. So we don't need a CPU cooler. So up next is motherboard. And this is where PC Part Picker comes into hand because it's going to filter automatically the motherboard types that um, are compatible with the processor choice. So it's going to be an AM4 socket, no matter which one we pick. Or down on the left, it will be our mandatory selection. As you can see here, we have no other choices other than an AM4. Okay, memory slots. Let's give ourselves a minimum of four. We'll probably buy two in this build, but we'll leave ourselves two free for future upgrades. And let's have a scroll on down. Let's go for an M2 slot. Um, it's an interface type for new... Um, small form factor solid straight drives it's uh if you've not seen them the form factor is uh it, it's brilliant they clip onto the motherboard no cables necessary um, and the price of the storage types for that connectors are so comparable to anything else that it's worth it's worth making sure you have a motherboard with with that expansion going forward um I'm trying to think if there's anything else we want to look at uh micro atx form factor you don't need anything else that's the size of the motherboard. Okay, let's order by price. Let's limit our price to, let's say, $89, just to get rid of a lot of these. We've got so many, $90 to do. Okay, so we scroll down, make sure if there's anything we're missing. Now these are looking good. All right, let's check out this one at $59.99. Okay, so we've got the four RAM slots. DDR4, this is a B450 motherboard, which is fine. Ah, one thing I wanted to make sure of, but just so happens this motherboard has, we're looking at a good memory speed. So Ryzen processors also become faster with the faster memory speed you pair them with. So 3200 was something I wanted to look at for this build, and it just so happens this motherboard is compatible. So when it comes to our RAM choice, we're going to want to aim to hit this speed for our RAM. So just to mention that. Okay, as you can see, two M2, two M2 slots, which is great for our expansion and future expansion. So, yep, let's go ahead and add that one to our build. Right, on to what we were just talking about, RAM. So, for this build, we're going to look at 16 gig of RAM. Um, while 8 is fine for all the Sims, whether it's a set of course or I race, an R factor, you name it. Um, the price is so negligible, we would free up two, four, two more spots rather than two fours now and two fours later. And you're going to want to get those paired RAMs. Try and avoid one large RAM stick. Always go with the dual memory channels. So always look for two paired RAM sticks. Um, okay, as we're discussing our speed, um, i tell you what, we will look higher though. But it will be 3200 we end up getting for the price. So as discussed, two eights give us 16 gig of RAM, give us plenty of headroom. Uh, the cast latency is like the round trip speeds. So let's limit that at 16, which is fine for DDR4. Um, let's get a heat spreader. Um, it's just a cover for the RAM to help distribute heat evenly and dissipate it better. Whether it makes a big deal or not is debatable but um, for the prices we're going to be getting it will be fine so let's order by price let's limit our price down let's say 60 bucks 
Okay, what have we got? Um, now, the next thing is, obviously, we haven't had to mention it yet, but the brand. Obviously, you don't always just pick the cheapest. You would also want to make sure a manufacturer you trust. Um, you also gain access to reviews here. Uh, it, it just helps make you make a better informed decision. Okay, so, I mean, I've never used these top two brand names. I have used G-Skill and the Rip Draws VCR. Uh, that's good stuff. And as you can see, heavy amount of five-star reviews. So that is something we're going to be, is going to be great for our build to make sure it's good stuff. So two eights, the speed we were looking for at DDR4. Um, latency speed is absolutely fine and it has the heat spreader. So let's go ahead and add that to our build. Okay, great. So at, as you can see here, the price is at the moment. Uh, these two are found on Newegg for the cheapest. This is found on Amazon. Sometimes the prices can be the same. Um, well, in this case, it's not. You can set your preferential. And you can remove different merchants. and But we'll come to that later. Storage. Okay, so for this, there are many ways of going about it. Um, to have a fast operating system, you're going to want a solid state drive, you know, NVMe and all, all these new fancy words. You're going to get faster boot times. Everything is going to be a lot more responsive on the OS side. On the game side, you don't gain in-game performance from a faster hard drive. You do gain significantly faster loading times, whether that be transitioning load scenes, how the game boots up. Um, so... Traditionally, what you would do is get a large capacity standard mechanical hard drive and a smaller solid state drive to run your operating system on. Um, but today, prices are coming down. I mean, so I'm going to look around the $90 to $100 region for a terabyte of super fast solid state drive with the NVMe, Non Volatile Memory Express, which is a very new standard. It's it's the fastest way to run Windows and your games all on the same hard drive without having to worry about OS on one and apps on the other. So, but there are this this part here, there are plenty of ways of approaching it and there's no wrong way of approaching it. You don't need a terabyte. Uh, you, It's up to you, but uh, I'm just looking for value for money, large because games can take up a lot of room and all the um, extras, the DLCs, the downloads, the cash. So... I'm going to put the capacity at a terabyte. Remember, this is going to be for our games and our OS all on one. And 2280 is the desktop M2 form factor. That's what we made sure our motherboard had available. Um, the M2. NVMe, that's the interface we wanted to make sure we got, which is the super fast new standard. Right, let's order our price. Let's drag our price down about 100 odd. Okay, so as you can see, the price, yeah, if this is acceptable for you, that's great. This is the sort of um, figures I'm looking at. Let's lower it a little bit, see if we get any better results. No. So, Crucial makes some great stuff. This is well reviewed. This is going to be compatible with our motherboard. Let's take a look at it. So, this is the connector. No wires needed, no power connectors, nothing coming from the power supply, quite literally clips into your motherboard, screw down at the back, extremely fast. You don't have to worry about where you install anything unless you have preferent folders. But as far as drives go, this is this is great. This is very future proof. I think value for money wise, you're really getting a, a good score here. So let's go and add that to our build with that button instead. <laughs> Okay, well, I'm next. Right, the all-important video card. So this is what renders your games. This is what gives you your beautiful-looking graphics. This is this is the part of your machine that plays your games. Okay, so obviously it's extremely important. And remember, this is just my choice. There are... I mean, who am I to judge budget? This is an endless sea. There are hundreds. Everybody has their own opinion. Some people would... Team AMD, some people are Team NVIDIA. I'm Team Value for Money. Um, now, my bias might slightly be towards NVIDIA just because I've run those before. Um, I've toyed with the idea of moving to AMD, but every time I do, um, I usually pick the more power-efficient 
And it's true that games are just always slightly more optimized towards NVIDIA. That's the best way of putting it. The AMD have been making great strides lately, but um, they usually run quite hot. They usually lose a lot of power. And um, a lot of their more budget-focused graphics cards are just small iterations on a previous graphics card, and they crank the clocks. Now, they're great. They are great. I know lots of people that run them. They're not a problem. This is just all my opinion. Okay, so how are we going to filter it down? Let's make sure we have at least 6 gig of RAM. Now we're going to want to make sure we at least have GDDR5 at least speeds. Um, and that's a, a minimum we're going to look for. Uh, let's put our core clocks, let's say for now, at 1300 megahertz. Okay. Um, TDP. Now, obviously, the graphics card I select may not be ideal for you, depending on what monitors you have. Display port, HDMI. Um, the variations are crazy, but I'll try and find a good all-rounder. Uh, we'll come down to cooling when we've at least built a list of what we might be looking for. Let's set the boost clock to 1500 megahertz. I thought I said 13. Sometimes this uh, slider can be seriously fiddly. Right, let's order by price. Limit the price down a bit and see what we're working with. So let's say 220, 230, say. Okay, what have we got? We've got an RX 590. Um, GTX 1660, which is what I run in my system. It's a um, it's AMD's RTX series with the machine learning, the ML cores, and all that removed and branded GTX. So it has lots of the new age features of the RTX cards without the ray tracing features. Um, it was really appealing and came out around the time I was looking at a graphics card. Um, we can afford to limit the price down a bit more. Help make us a better decision. Okay, so dun, dun, dun. let's bump up the core clocks 15. And what have we got? Plenty of 1500s. So let's do 15 and 17 rather. This will just help us whittle it down. Okay, what have we got? So, okay. <laughs> I didn't deliberately create this bias, obviously. It's me filling out the filters, and I've ended up with my graphics card. Um, it's not me selling it to you. I made these informed decisions myself. And so, it looks like we've landed on every single one being a 1660. Uh, let's look at that cooling option I mentioned about. So we've got the option for how many fans. Um, the more fans you have, the cooler it can be kept and actually sometimes the quieter it can, can be kept because a, one fan might have to do twice the speed to cool it as much as two fans would have. So let's look at two and three fans. I doubt we're going to get a triple fan for this sort of price. All right, and then it next comes down to brand and we have an MSI sitting at the top. What's the core clocks any different? Um, this one's a pinch higher, but we're paying a lot more money, and we can overclock that ourselves. Um, EVGA. Okay, yeah, let's go with this one. Let's get that added to our build. What's up next? Case. Now, case. Short of your gear that we've looked at fitting in, this is completely subjective. Uh, what you might want in the case, future proofing, size, uh, side doors I mean this is going to be quite a difficult one um, but I'll we'll run through some options to try and filter it down first of all this is a budget build let's bring that all the way down for now to there for now now I'm gonna select some manufacturers um, purely for the reason to limit us down a bit you know I, I, I I'm not sure how we're gonna do this other than um, Limiting that down a bit. So let's look at Corsairs, Fractal Design, 
uh, where's Leon Lay? Leon Lay. Um, not even sure MSI make cases. Fanatex make great cases. Rosewheel, they're okay. Thermal take. Um, apologies if I'm missing a great brand. Oh, NZXT, they make great cases. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Give away even make cases. We've got Corsair, Cooler Master. I don't think be quite make cases. If they do, they'll be going. They're going to be awesome, like the rest of their gear. Okay, so our motherboard was a oh sorry, uh, we want an ATX let's say mid tower. We the full tower is a bit going to be a bit excessive for the components we chose. Um, ATX, a micro ATX mid tower, it's fine. It's subjective. They're quite small. It's this is really up to you. Uh, we don't want a power supply. We're going to pick that ourselves. Okay, so let's pick a tinted window. Any type of side, not tinted. Sorry, apologies. Any sort of side panel, so we can look at our build. Power shroud doesn't matter. Oh, let's make sure we've got some USB. Uh, you know, the fastest USB Type A's on the front rather than the twos because they're so slow. Uh, our motherboard form factor is micro ATX. Uh, let's make sure we've got an internal 3.5 inch bay just because and let's say we make sure at least we've got two internal 2.5s for future SSDs and let's limit our price down significantly so we may as well just pick the cheapest let's have a look tempered glass yep that looks pretty cool Yep, let's do that. Uh, let's add that to our build. So up next is the power supply. So let's make sure we have a gold plus standard and up. I highly doubt we're going to get a platinum for super cheap. Um, apologies, let me go back and here we go. Estimated wattage, wattage of our build is 279. Obviously you want headroom, future expansions, and um, things you're going to connect up to your PC in the future and um, the, the price of them based on wattage isn't that different. Let's look at a minimum of a 450. Um, we don't want anything above a 920. Get into silly. Okay, modular or not, um, full or semi, full would be preferred. Basically, you can disconnect all the wires from the power supply that you don't end up using, rather than having to just wrap them around somewhere on your PC. Okay, let's order by price. Bring that down significantly again. Wow, that got rid of a few. So, do we have any full modulars? 66. That's not going to be worth it for a semi modular. Um, just means some parts can't be removed, but mostly the parts that can't, you're going to be using anyway. Um, and I believe this is what I actually have in my gaming build. Um, the name rings a bell. It could have been full. No, mine's semi. Okay, let's get this one added to our build. Let's just check the requirements, make sure I didn't miss anything. We'll take a quick look at bronze to see what prices would have come out. Um, nope, there you go. So that's a great deal. This one here, right? What else do we need? Optical drive that's your CD tray. Um, it's not something I worry about anymore. Um, I'm not sure when the last time I put a disc in my computer was. I mean, I can we can look at one, but um, requirement wise, I, I have no idea. I mean, this isn't something I would worry about today. If you're looking for one, just find the cheapest unless you need a rewriter or a blu-ray rewriter then check out some reviews um operating system we're not going to worry about that that's something i assume windows you're going to be running uh, you can run linux but um, you're not going to have much luck getting most of the sims working um monitor we'll do in a separate video um that is a discussion that is as long as our entire video is now because obviously, especially in the sim world, you have large monitors, TVs, triple monitors, ultra wides, 
super ultra rides and then you've got the discussion with refresh rate resolution um and then based on those requirements we need different power requirements from our gpu because if you've got three 2k high refresh monitors the graphics card we have chosen and even the processor being a six core it m may be a limiting factor so let's have a look at our price what have we here 615 um we could have done sub 600 if we'd have sacrificed a little bit on the storage we could have gone with a mechanical hard drive for all of our files that would have been say 20 30 bucks and then we could have bought a solid state drive at say 300 meg 250 meg for our os sorry gig 250 gig 300 gig for our os to run on um we could have picked a case that wasn't one of the brands i chose i'm sure if you went completely brandless you could save yourself a huge chunk of money but the case was one of those things it was just subjective so we had to pick something from the thousands so i just filtered down a few so how good would this rig be now i can speak for the ryzen 5 2600x um which is um they're both very similar the only thing that's different is the um base core clock and the the boost clock have been uh, overclocked a little and subsequently they've put on a slightly better cooler but unless you're going to be pushing yours unless you have uh, case cooling issues that you're not really going to notice much of a performance overhead in your sim the motherboard is great our ram requirements are perfect for running our the games right we're targeting the storage just makes it fantastically easy os boot time game boot times are going to be outstanding you're not going to have a, any trouble there you will you'll be the envy of your friends uh the gtx 1660 is what i'm coming to you from now so if you have watched my iRacing videos uh you know how that is obviously take into consideration i'm also streaming and uh, all the add-ons and extras i have run at the exact same time um the case the power supply um so this is gonna be i would say a 1080p gaming mon uh gaming rig now you can run three monitors i would keep them 1080p and in the sims just watch your anti-aliasing and your shadows um lowering those should help um now i'm not saying you can't run um 2k most of the sims especially i racing the requirements for i racing are, are a lot lower than say a set of Corsa. um but it's gonna be hitting those high refresh rates but you can make sacrifice with your graphical settings. A lot of the graphical settings in all of the sims are completely unnecessary unless you're broadcasting or if you want to put those settings just in the replays so you look back or you record or you upload or share your your footage. But um, this is going to be a... I don't want to undersell it. This is highly comparable. You, you, you are going to be able to play any sim for the next couple of years at 1080p settings will be high and you if you have a high refresh monitor you're going to be you're going to be hitting those high refreshes um so if there's any questions you have or you want to send me your build i will put all the links to the products in the description i will link to this in the description as well so you can take a look at my build i'll keep it saved and online but yeah if you've just made a build if you're looking at build and you've got questions um Obviously, make sure you check the minimum required specifications for all the sims. It's all out there. Just Google Assetto or Corsa Competency Own Minimum Requirements or Recommended Requirements is the ones you probably want. Minimum Requirements literally means the game can run at complete minimum settings, looking like garbage. So, yeah, always look for the recommended. But, um, no, I'd love to know what you think. Let me know if you buy this build. I would love to see it. Um, because obviously at the moment it's just on paper, even though I have a few of these components and the brands we've picked are, uh, let me just check them all. Yeah, we haven't picked a single bad brand here. It's all stuff I know. Um, all right, guys, I think that's all. So make sure you subscribe, like if you like this video, but in, um, I'm going to do future follow-up videos on these how-tos and helpful guide videos. So coming soon, I'm going to be doing a video with regards to racing overlays and everything I have set up my end. I'm going to be doing, as I discussed, monitors, um, quite a few video plans, and obviously my standard race videos. All right, guys, thank you very much, and I will catch you in the next one.